Well, hello there. How's my little deviant doing this fine evening? <laughs> well, I knew you had a busy day planned, but you said you wanted to see me tonight again. It's becoming quite the regular occurrence. I decided I would have a little surprise waiting for you. No, me shirtless would certainly be a gift to you, one I'd happily let you unwrap. But I'd hardly say it constitutes a surprise at this point. Your hands and mouth have mapped out almost every inch of my body by now, and I've happily reciprocated. I don't know that there are many more surprises left in that regard, in terms of physical layout. But there's still plenty of ecstasy to be experienced. Make no mistake. No, I wanted a surprise that's a little more fitting. Dessert. Or a deviant that's sweeter than they have any business being. They're not without bite, too. I should know. You've done wonderful things to me with those teeth. <laughs> I hope you like it. I'd imagine I have a pretty good idea of your taste by now. Unfortunately, there aren't many desserts that include your precious wing sauce, so I had to improvise a bit. <laughs> Good. I'm glad you like the look of it. Then let's dig in, shall we? <sighs> hmm? Yes, I made it with magic. Why? I could have made it by hand, but that would just make a mess and take longer. Who told you food is hard to make? Oh, well, he's a human, I assume. Well, that's why. Yes, I imagine it is hard for humans to make food worth eating out of magic. Demons don't have that problem. <sighs> That's not bragging, Deviant. Though that would certainly be in my wheelhouse. You really don't know much about demons, do you? I guess I shouldn't be surprised. Most people born to empowered families don't even bother to learn about us. And you didn't even have access to the information until fairly recently. Not that the Academy would recommend it to you anyway. Half the time, I think they'd prefer it if we all just disappeared. Maybe my empathy kindred had the right idea. We're made of magic, Voyeur. We're born on the magical plane. It's our home. We're magic, given physical form. So as you might imagine, we're very good at using it. Your kind, empowered humans, you're divided into groups who have specialties with different kinds of magic. Psychokinetics, elementals, telepaths, dreamwalkers, the list goes on. Or in your case, freelancer, an equal opportunist. For demons, 
we are divided into groups who have different energy needs. I can do any kind of magic with equal ease, but I specifically need human feelings of sexual desire to survive. It's my fuel. Our people are bound together, even though most of the human population doesn't know it. We need humanity to survive. And you magic users need our home to have your abilities. What's it like? The magical plane? That's hard to answer. Hmm. It doesn't follow the same laws that your reality is built upon. It's something completely different. It's magic, fluid, gaseous, solid. It is untapped magical force given infinite form and diversity and complexity. beautiful. It's like touching pure energy in every inch of the place. It's hard to describe. In those moments when you're calling on your powers, when there's that stillness within you, that, that building force, that electricity on the other side of your threads. I don't know what that feels like exactly. Our relationship to magic is different, but I imagine that that feeling you get, that force, that meets you in the middle when you call upon your powers. It's like that. But everywhere. Enveloping you. Cradling you. It's home. But I prefer to keep my visits back there short. Let it keep some of that mystique. It's a wonderful place to be. Briefly. Alone. It's the other people there that make it unbearable. This evening is supposed to be about enjoying dessert together deviant, and not just the edible kind, if you have the mind. <laughs> it's not supposed to be me lamenting. <sighs> All right, a little more maudlin whining then. But then, you owe it to me to let me bring you rapture tonight. Hm. Thought you might like that deal. <laughs> Alright. I don't get along with my own kind very well. Incubi and succubi, I mean. I have some fundamental differences 
in the things that I value and the ways that I interact with my human cohorts. Only demons of sexual desire can change our forms to match the preferences of our partners. It's easy to do, and it makes sense if you consider our work some kind of a job where the only goal is to milk the maximum amount of desire out of someone and then go along with our day. They teach us to refine those skills in our coursework at the academy. Get some horned out volunteer to stumble into the room and we have to reshape ourselves to be their perfect mate. And then we're graded on our ability to match their desires. I hated those classes. I hated changing myself into something I'm not, just to please someone else, so that in turn I could feed off of that manufactured interest. I did it to pass the class, and I've never done it since, and I never will. Call it arrogance, but I know the appeal I have, just as I am, as me, Gavin. I don't have to change myself to be wanted. There are incubi who don't even remember what they look like. They've forgotten. They've been so many other people that they don't remember who they are. That's practically the norm with my people. They are what people want them to be. Because it's the easiest way to get what you want. Well, I don't want easy. I want to be a person. My own person. That's practically heresy for a sex demon. I'm supposed to exist purely for the desires of others because that's what keeps me alive. But being alive and living are two different things. I get plenty of energy just by being me. Humans fuck each other and love each other every day despite everyone having a million little flaws. That's what makes people, people. I might not check the box for every person out there, but I don't have to. So I don't. And that puts me at odds with almost every other member of my kind that I've met. That's what I mean when I say that I love my home, but I don't love being there for long. Here, at least, I exist on my own terms. <sighs> Gavin is a name I chose for myself. When I coalesced in the Elysian well, I bore the name Vindimiator. But he's someone else. 
seven is who I am now. The painfully attractive and blissfully talented man you now see before you. You're welcome in advance. And now that I've offered you even more of my proverbial soul, can we please change the subject? Ideally to something I'm a bit more comfortable with. Like your body and what it'll feel like writhing beneath mine tonight. <sighs> I know. Evasive to the end. But thank you, freelancer, for being someone that I can share myself with unaltered even the ugly bits that I prefer to hide away just Gavin now how long until we get to start that second dessert I keep pointedly referring to. 